On the Eastern Front, a series of devastating thrusts by the Red Army, following their destruction of the German 4th and 9th Panzer Armies in the gigantic battle around Kursk in July 1943, had steadily forced the Germans back, despite Hitler's insistence that every bit of Russian soil must be held and no retreat permitted. Kursk was a landmark, probably the greatest tank battle of all time, and the last great effort by the Germans to break the Soviets by means of massed armoured formations in set-piece battles. At the same time, Hitler, faced with Allied landings in Sicily, then Italy, found that the nightmare of war on several fronts was a reality. Furthermore, the impending threat of an Allied invasion of Europe, the Second Front, was tying down yet more troops. High-quality divisions had been moved to southern Europe to fight the campaign in Italy, and more forces were deployed in Scandinavia, the Low Countries, and the Balkans on occupation duties that frequently involved pitched battles with ever-increasing numbers of assorted partisans and guerrillas. In spite of this drain on their resources, the German generals in the east continued to fight with great skill, inflicting heavy losses on their opponents as they slowly yielded ground. But even after the Allied invasion of France in June 1944 and the subsequent advance towards the Rhine, Hitler was curiously undismayed. He sensed that the Western Allies were finding it hard to agree on the terms demanded in the event of a final victory that now seemed increasingly certain. 